Hello, this is Shilpa here. Uh, today I want to share some cases on aggravations in uh, a homeopathic clinic. Now, there are different types of aggravations as you've known and let me share you a case with each type and also what are the strategies you adopt and how do the follow-ups actually go. So this, um, this is the first one where I had this patient about a year back. He had severe depression since the last 12 years and he had a few uh, suicidal attempts in the past. He was hospitalized for that and was on elegron and lithium on a high dose. So when he gave the case, um, he said it all started when he nearly lost his son who was 16 weeks of age then. The son's now about 16 years old. And so I took this whole case using the delusional approach at stage three where he was ready to go to that particular stage. So now let's uh, start on with what was the prescription given and how we went from there. So the susceptibility in his case was about low to medium because he was on a high medication. Um, the susceptibility for me was on the lower side. So I decided to give him Natrum Self 200. I would have gone with the 30 but I had a 200 then so I thought let's go with those. Just take one, two and three doses on three separate days in a liquid potency and I asked him to stop. Now the patient was uh, due to follow up in about a fortnight but he couldn't make it so he saw me after a month. When he came he said he came down with these severe flu symptoms just the very next day of the first dose. This went away in a day and he says generally his flus last for a long time like for weeks and this time it was just a one-off date that was unusual and then he said he developed a severe fungal infection in the groin it was horrible it was very itchy um, it was extremely offensive and he said it smelled of the very medication he was on so it was like as if it was oozing a lifetime of of stuff um, and then this fungal infection lasted for about four weeks which was sort of the week before and he said the itching was so bad and he had to apply antifungal creams. So at this point I now need to understand what type of aggravation is this. So there are two important questions which go in my mind then. The first was have you ever had this symptom before and he said yes on and off I have had some fungal infections I've applied creams but they go away. But this one was so severe and so intense that it didn't seem to respond even to the creams I was applying. And the next symptom now is how are you otherwise? How is your chief complaint and how is your um, general? So he said, I feel a bit more centered. I'm able to cope things, especially things which seem to worry me before don't seem to which is very unusual and surprising because this has never happened in the last 12 years. And then that was a time I realized this was a homeopathic aggravation because if the generals and within himself he's feeling better, I just need to wait and watch. So what happened was the medicine was just given as and when it was required and through the next few months when he followed, every time during the case I tried to check in how was he doing generally and emotionally so he was in a much better place he was not as confused and depressed he was reaching out to people and fostering new relationships he lost a bit of extra weight because he reduced or the craving for sugar reduced and he had this lesser tendency to binge eat which was for me quite important so when the generals when the whole emotional mental and physical well-being is aligned then you know you don't need to really worry about all these superficial manifestations and that was the strategy so you repeated the dose and he didn't follow for long he followed for about four or five months and then i called him last month to just see how he was going and he said he had been well he never had to take a dose again and now he's completely tapered off um, the lithium so that for me was an example of a homeopathic aggravation. Because the aggravation lasted for a longer time than, I than I've ever had, sort of for a month, which was quite unusual, 
I was sort of, that would have been a time when I would have doubted whether it was really a new thing which was happening or it was a part of the medication. But because within himself there were changes, we just persisted. I didn't really antidote anything. I didn't also give him something else to take care of it. It was more about the communication that he had to go through that because it was a part of the process and he was happy with that. So initially he was really frustrated, but then once we spoke about it, I think he was much okay with that. Let's see another case. This lady came with severe contact dermatitis. Now, this was a lady who came in one of the student clinics when I was at, um, at the college and the case was taken by the student. It was taken at stage three. However, we didn't really get a lot of information from her. What we got were really peculiar keynotes. So what was happening there were, was that she had um, this dermatitis on her fingers, basically. She could not handle currency notes. She was extremely sensitive to everything and she needed to wear cotton gloves to prevent the flare-ups. The skin was extremely dry and cracked and sore and burning. It looked as if it was burned. And um, those were the keynotes we got. We got a few more information on her physical and emotional state, but um, that was it. So the remedy which was given to her was staff. Now her susceptibility and sensitivity was extremely high, emotionally, physically and mentally. So although I would have liked to give her a Staphysagria 1M, because her sensitivity was so high, we went to a low potency and she was asked to take three doses and stop. So that was sort of the protocol where you just take one, two, three. If you start seeing symptoms on the first day, you stop or you start feeling better on the first day you stop. So that was something we asked her to do. She comes back and she says, after the first dose, she had this intense pain at night, which woke her up. It was this violent drawing at four or five in the morning, as if there was a knife slicing up and down her spine. And she said the skin over the spine was extremely sore to touch, as if it was excoriated and raw. Now, she took the dose again the next day and the next day. So she said it happened every night I took the dose. So sometimes because patients are new to homeopathy, they don't understand that a reaction might be also a reaction which is not good or which is intense and you need to stop the dose, whatever the reaction is. So that helped me with my communication where, the, where I wrote any sort of reaction is when you stop the dose. But anyway, what sort of aggravation is this? Now, the first thing I was wondering was, has she ever, has this pain ever um, occurred in her life before? And she said, no, she never had the symptom. This was a complete new symptom. And this is the first time she's ever had it. So the next question now is whether it's a new thing which is happening, which is another problem, or it's a problem, which is something as a part of the remedy picture. So picked up the book and referred where Staphysagria was and I think in one of the books this was the exact symptom there uh, while in pain at around four or five in the morning wakes up takes a breath away and absolutely sore and excoriating and drawing and that's when we realized this is a remedy aggravation but now even if the remedy aggravates we have to know whether this patient is better or worse so we ask her the next question how are you in general and she said, even with that extreme pain at night, within me, I felt extremely peaceful. You know, the finger seemed better for a week after the dose, but it's now becoming sore and painful again. But I'm now dreading taking this dose again because I don't want that pain to come back. So at this juncture, we know the remedy is right. It's just aggravating the person. There have been situations where the remedy is wrong and it's aggravating and it's absolutely annoying for the patient. But in this case, that was the better part of the story. So what do you do now? There are a few things which, uh, which has helped me in my clinic. The first strategy is wait and watch. I don't try an antidote remedies. Um, I wait because I think the body has this ability, if the susceptibility is good, to actually take care of it. The remedy would stop. You know, once you stop the doses, the effects would wear off. 
But what I do when they repeat is I ask them to reduce the potency. I, I do reduce the potency if that's the case, or I use a double dilution method, which means that particular, those drops in another cup of water and take one spoon from that cup after stirring it well. They can also do another dilution and so on if it's really, um, it's still aggravating. The other thing they could do is reduce the number of succussions. Normally I say 10 succussions. If they're reacting quite badly to it, five. And it's interesting how people do really respond to differences in the succussions as well. And also sometimes I would say just use, you know, olfaction. There have been so many cases where just sniffing the remedy has created a huge response. It's extremely, uh, sort of, you know, it's really hard for someone um, to be reacting to these doses. But when they are really, when they are at a very higher stage and they're very sensitive, you cannot imagine how patients can actually react to such doses. And it sometimes doesn't seem to fit your logic because for you, taking a dose if your susceptibility is moderate, then you can never actually go and understand their level of sensitivity, which could be higher or lower than you. So it's all about them rather than what seems logical to you. So we have to actually give them that, uh, you know, the whole, they, they have to be given that sort of uh, a choice to take the remedy as and how they want it to. Now, another thing you could also work is use LMs. But again, some patients might even react to LMs, but in most cases where the remedy has worked well and I need a, and it's a progressively deteriorating disease, LMs have really worked very well for me. So these are the different things you can do if there is a medical aggravation. Let's look at the third one. This is a lady who was uh, 57 and she came with multiple issues. She had anxiety disorders going on, she had severe cramps, she had Meniere's disease and about you know 10 years back and she was with me for a long time. So she, she was doing well on the remedy phosphorus um, and she came you know once or twice or thrice a year whenever she had an issue um, with her boyfriend but otherwise normally she responded quite well to it. So. This was a time when she came for a problem at work. So there was some extreme stress going on. There were issues with her boss. And um, because she had responded to phosphorus before, I repeated the same remedy for this most recent episode, which was a new thing for her. She comes back and she says, the cramps in my feet and legs are better. But after that dose, I had this low grade burning in the small of my back behind the stomach. And she said it feels emotional because my back is normally strong and I've not had it, uh, I've not had any problems with my back before, but this pain was annoying me all day. It was as if the back was collapsing on it, the spine was weakening, as if my vertebra was crumbling and squashed down. It was as if it was, I was kicked in my back. So this was a new symptom for, for me. So I asked a few more questions. Uh, and then I asked her, how are you in general? And she said, I have this awful nervousness and anxiety. It was verging on, on panic. And I tried to get involved in my job, but my boss is trying to get me to resign. And I'm having these horrible play people in my job. And it's really hard for me to be there. So... When I saw that generally, even if the cramps were better, I thought that generally there, was, there wasn't that sort of a well-being which I was expecting here. So I thought phosphorus just didn't do anything. This is an aggravation of the disease. It's, it's a part of the progression of what's happened, what started about a, a fortnight back when she came to me for the first time. So this was a time I thought this was a disease aggravation. There's no way this person is doing well. Um, there's no way the phosphorus is creating a medicinal aggravation here because this is something new. So the strategy was I'll retake the case. So I went in detail because this symptom for me was very important. The back ache and the way she was describing that ache and she was connecting it to her emotional. So this was a mind-body correlation here and she went to stage four very well there. So we went 
in detail and then the secondary prescription was given to her the mo the susceptibility was quite good you know moderate to high so i was going between kali carb 200 or 1 m we settled i settled with 200 and i thought i'll go 1 m when she starts doing well so kali carb was given to her as a stage 4 remedy and she comes back after 4 weeks and she says i'm much better after the dose i had a spasm in my rib muscles about the liver and then i had a couple of teary days you know i was weeping and and then the back started to ease off and she says now i find it amusing i was reacting to all those horrible people at work so somehow the workplace has changed or her perception has changed i have been sleeping so much better i even haven't felt the need for any more herbs so she was taking herbs and acupuncture and lots of other things going on at the same time which she had to stop even with the ups and downs at work the intensity is much better my ears went a bit funny so she had the mini ears about a few years ago and she had the same symptoms come back and she had those ringing for four days because since the mini ears her, her hearing had been down about 60% and she said after those four days of ringing my ears are better like i'm i'm hearing wise much better i have this energy to get up and exercise again i've not done that for the last 6 months and she's remained well since then so i hope that makes you and it sort of i've just tried to help you realize that this sort of alignment between mind body and this whole well being emotionally physically uh spiritually at every level has to be okay to know what sort of aggravation that that is so within an aggravation if they are feeling better at every level that's definitely homeopathic if you can find the symptom in the matra medica for that remedy that is a medicine and aggravation and if it's not and you know it's not in the right track that's the disease aggravation 90% of the aggravations in the clinic are disease aggravation so if you don't know just simply retake and go on from there it's not very common to have a homeopathic aggravation unless the disease pathology is really um uh, the susceptibility is very low and the disease has been suppressed for a very long time um and medical aggravation i've had hardly had three or four cases in you know the last so many years that i've really seen a severe medical aggravation like this patient um in the case the second case so just with the practical aspects i think communication is the key whichever way if you are in constant touch with the patient i always give them a form where i write to them i write some points it it has evolved over the years because i've missed some things and i i made some changes in it and and know it sort of reads well so that the patient understands even if they've never taken homeopathy before that this is the process this is the exteriorization of the disease and sometimes it can go the other way and we need to know so we can be on top of things pacing the follow ups well sometimes the aggravations can last for a longer time so when they come to you it might be too premature to really know what's going on because the aggravation is going on but emotionally and mentally they're not or physically and generally they're not feeling better so it needs a bit more time for the generals to start you know getting back in rhythm so sometimes that pacing is important what i normally tell them is call me after a week and see me after two weeks or three weeks after that first remedy because once i know you're on track then we can pace them well um and obviously i've never really antidoted um in my experience obviously i know homeopaths who have antidoted and they have you know they get wonderful results that way too but for me it's always been this thing about you know wait and watch don't mess up the picture you know with with other things because there are obviously lots of things going on you know you get to know what the remedy has done you get to see where you know things are getting at and a new picture and a new remedy can sometimes make a wonderful sort of antidoting action of the previous remedy when there is no time so that's what actually worked for me but i would love to know what works for you what are the aggravations you see and what do you do and if you use antidoting let me know because i love to learn from that as well all right oh thank you so much and have a great day and i'll see you next time
बाय